But if, let's go a step further. The number one risk factor for somebody becoming a child sex abuser is having been abused themselves. You know what the second risk is? Emotional abuse and abandonment. Let me tell you what I learned at my pre-doc. I learned that when a child is emotionally abused and abandoned, they have no body. They need somebody. For a while, they use their toys, but the toys can't talk back, can't hug back, can't love back. So guess what? If I'm used to being abused and abandoned, right? Nobody has ever really spent time with me, poured into me. My mom is too into her career. My father into his new wife. I need somebody to love me like I love them, right? So my victim has to be somebody who can't do what? Refuse my advances. I can't afford any more rejection. I can't afford any more abandonment. So I got to find a victim who can reciprocate, but who is totally under my control. That's why the 12 year old gets the five year old. That's why the 15 year old gets the eight year old because they are too young to say no. They are too young to go tell. They are too young to resist intimidation. And this is why child sex abuse begins in childhood. So for me, the best prevention, is, excuse me, the best intervention is prevention. Make sure what? Make sure black children get the love, the attention and the protection that they need as children. Now I'm gonna loop this back to our polygyny conversation. If we know that homosexuals and pedophiles are born out of a dysfunctional, emotionally unavailable family environment and 70% of black children are being raised by a single mother doing the best she can, working multiple jobs to care for them children. If you don't put a black man in them homes, there may be things going on in that house that gives rise to pedophilia and homosexuality later in life. So if we are really trying to stop the rise of gay black men, and if we are really trying to stop the rise of pedophilia in the black family, how do we not give those women? How do we not allow those women to participate in a plural marriage family? What do we hate more, plural marriage or pedophilia? Do you feel me? Because plural marriage can very well be the answer for a lot of that pedophilia. If the man is in the house, you can best believe molestation ain't taking place as much as it's taken now. Look at the homes our kids live in. The mother got the work. Welfare cut. So the kids are raising themselves. You think you got homosexuality now? And the etiology of all of this is emotional abandonment and neglect. If we don't give black children the love that they need when they are children, they will try to vicariously take it from another younger child when they get older. Pedophilia, child pedophilia, even adult, but we're talking children, at a certain level can be viewed as a drastic attempt to force a loving relationship with someone who cannot refuse me because I never had a loving relationship with my parents who did refuse me. It's the family. But like, is there anything realistically that can be done to minimize molestation? Because man, it's just like, yeah, these kids are destroyed and it seems like it's hard for them to bounce back from it. Oh, it's very hard for them to bounce back, but here's why they can't bounce back. The time between trauma and treatment can be 40 years. If you got molested at eight and you're going to see a therapist for the first time at 48, you, you see what I'm saying? The core beliefs that that trauma gave birth to in your consciousness, how are you gonna get them out? You've been operating on those for 40 years. We can get them out, but it might take 40 years to get rid of them. You follow me? So one of the issues is the time between trauma and treatment. If we got them right after they got touched, oh, we could save them all. But if you ain't getting them till 20, 30 years after they've been molested, you can still save them, but it's going to be much tougher.